Good evening and thank you for joining us. Hong Kong's total retail sales in May plunged 11.5% year-on-year. It marks the third consecutive month of decline. The Retail Management Association expects market sentiment to remain subdued during summer. The total retail sales value in May is provisionally estimated at $30.5 billion. Most notably, motor vehicles and parts tumbled nearly 30 percent, followed by jewelry, watches and clocks and valuable gifts, as well as commodities in department stores, which plummeted more than 20 percent. Clothing, furniture, Chinese medicine and optical shops all recorded double-digit declines. The few increases were seen in categories including books, newspapers, stationery and gifts, medicines and cosmetics, as well as electrical goods and other consumer durable goods. Apart from January and February, this year saw declines in monthly sales value even with the Golden Week holidays in May. Considering the speedy business downturn, together with high rent and manpower costs, other economic factors such as the strong Hong Kong dollar also pose challenges to the retail industry. The Hong Kong Retail Management Association added people might stay awake at night to watch the Olympic Games and sleep in, hence affecting retail performance. A government spokesperson said the latest figures were mainly impacted by changes in visitor and resident spending patterns, as well as the higher exchange rate of the Hong Kong dollar, plus the high base number for comparison last year. Looking ahead, the retail sector may still face some challenges in the near term, but the recent measures from Beijing, including the expanded individual visit scheme and the increase of duty-free allowance for mainland visitors should help stimulate business. The government is making arrangements to receive the two new giant pandas that the central government will be giving to the city. Chief Executive Zhao Li has instructed the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau to send staff to Sichuan province and make arrangements for the delivery of the national treasures. Timothy Li tells us more. It's been 17 years since new giant pandas were welcomed into Hong Kong. Chief Executive John Lee said the government is currently holding talks with the Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office and the National Forestry and Grassland Administration to make arrangements for the arrival of the pandas. He has also instructed the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau to send a delegation to Sichuan to make relevant preparations. I think the important thing is ensure that the arrangement for the giant pandas' arrival will be smooth and safe because I know that there will be quarantine requirements uh, and uh, all the necessary procedures need to be followed. We have experience uh, of receiving uh, the gifts of uh, giant pandas uh, from central authorities. Uh, and Ocean Park has been doing an excellent job in ensuring that they are well taken care of. I would like to see uh, the Hong Kong government delegation to uh, make uh, the trip uh, as soon as possible. The last pair of giant pandas to come to Hong Kong, Ying Ying and Lok Lok, were selected by the mainland's Forestry Bureau after two months of deliberation. The two pandas were not named prior to their arrival. They were also placed in quarantine for 30 days before meeting the public. This, as Chan Young, a lawmaker and a deputy to the National People's Congress, pointed out the popularity of celebrity pandas on the mainland. He said the city should seize the opportunity to bring some of their family members to Hong Kong to help boost the economy. Meanwhile, speaking about the upcoming measure of giving mainland travel permits to non-Chinese permanent residents of the SAR, the CE noted the government will promote the measure by contacting foreign chambers of commerce. He said foreign talents should grasp the opportunities offered by China's economic growth, especially in the Greater Bay Area. Timothy Lee, TVB News. Invest Hong Kong, the government's investment promotion agency, said it assisted 322 mainland and overseas companies to set up or expand their business in Hong Kong in the first half of the year. That marks an increase of 43 percent year on year. These companies come from 33 economies, which nearly ha with nearly half from the mainland. They include this chain restaurant selling chili and sour fish soup, which has nearly 700 branches in the mainland. While the restaurant's manager said its expansion to Hong Kong helps the company to better grasp international market trends, he admits rents and manpower shortage here are the biggest challenges. 
Still, most newly established companies are from financial services or fintech-related industries, followed by Inotech and family offices. Invest Hong Kong said these companies injected more than $38 billion into Hong Kong's economy, up 6% year-on-year. They have also created 3,500 job opportunities. Invest Hong Kong said it will continue to enhance its promotion work in strategic markets, including the ASEAN economies, the Middle East and North Africa. The number of Chinese companies has really increased a lot. The top five uh, places of origin still include United States, United Kingdom um, and Singapore, in addition to France. So these companies still also use Hong Kong as a springboard into Asia or into the rest of China. And Hong Kong is very unique as a hub. President Xi Jinping has arrived in Astana, the capital city of Kazakhstan, to attend the 24th meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Heads of State Council. He is also taking on state visits to Kazakhstan and Tajikistan after the summit. Danny Zhou tells us more. The God of Honor lined up at an airport in the Kazakhstani capital. Adorning the streets are the national flags of China and Kazakhstan as cheering crowds eagerly waited for the Chinese president, who is on his second visit to the country in less than two years. A group of Kazakhstani's children also prepared the famous Chinese song, Ode to My Motherland, to welcome Xi and his convoy. Kazakhstan's president, Kazim Jomat Tokayev, shook hands with Xi. The two leaders will hold in-depth discussions about bilateral relations, cooperation in key areas and the regional and international situations to inject new impetus into the two countries' permanent comprehensive strategic partnership. Xi said in a signed article that he was eyeing to chart a path forward for closer cooperation between China and Kazakhstan and draw a new blueprint for further growth of their bilateral relations and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or SCO. He also called on consolidating the political tradition of mutual support, facilitating win-win cooperation, strengthening friendship and people-to-people -people exchanges, as well as jointly handling the crises and opportunities that arise from the fast-changing global landscape. Both China and Kazakhstan are the SCO's founding members and active promoters. Zhang Xiao, the Chinese ambassador to Kazakhstan, pointed out that the SCO provided pivotal support for continuous upgrading of the joint construction of the Belt and Road Initiative and has promoted international transportation connectivity and trade liberalization in the region. Considering that Kazakhstan is where the BRI was proposed, the upcoming summit is expected to create more opportunities to take part in high-quality BRI construction and contribute to regional security, stability and revitalization. Meanwhile, the meetings will prompt deeper and broader cooperation between China and Central Asia, where all five countries are China's strategic partners. The SCO summit in Astana will be held from July the 2nd to the 6th, and China will take over the rotating chair at the conclusion of the summit. Denny Zhou, TVB News. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that former President Donald Trump is immune from criminal prosecution for official acts taken while in the White House. In a historic 6-3 ruling, the court's conservative majority has narrowed the case against Trump and returned it to a lower court to determine what is left of the indictment. Trump held the decision as a big win for our Constitution and democracy. President Joe Biden said the decision sets a dangerous precedent, adding the Supreme Court's majority decision means there are virtually no limits to what the president can do. NBC reports. Tonight, a monumental win at the Supreme Court for former President Trump. The conservative majority finding the presumptive GOP nominee must receive sweeping immunity for any official acts taken during his presidency. The 6-3 ruling a defeat for special counsel Jack Smith, with the court bulldozing through the charges against Mr. Trump for his alleged criminal efforts to stay in power, making the completion of any trial before November virtually impossible. Chief Justice John Roberts laying out a new sliding scale of what can be prosecuted, saying a president may not be prosecuted for exercising his core constitutional powers. 
that he has immunity from prosecution for all his official acts, but that a president has no immunity for private, unofficial acts, while cautioning the president is not above the law. A federal grand jury indicted the former president for orchestrating a conspiracy to retake the White House. Prosecutors alleging he leaned on his DOJ, VP and state officials to help him reverse the election results, mobilizing meetings of fake electors, it all culminating in the violent attack on the Capitol on January 6. Mr. Trump has pleaded not guilty to all charges and argued without immunity every president could be prosecuted by political opponents. If you don't have immunity, you're not going to do anything. You're going to become a ceremonial president. You're not going to take any of the risks. The majority today agreeing the commander-in-chief must be able to carry out his constitutional duties without risk of political prosecution. Writing, without immunity, such types of prosecutions of ex-presidents could quickly become routine, and that would weaken the presidency, which is exactly what the framers intended to avoid. The special counsel had pushed to get the case to trial before November. My office will seek a speedy trial. The ruling now dramatically chipping away at parts of Smith's case. The justices finding Mr. Trump's urging the then attorney general to investigate voter fraud now absolutely immune from prosecution. What remains in the indictment, including his pressure on his former VP? Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And local officials like this phone call to Georgia's former secretary of state. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have. Are now entitled to a presumption of immunity. The liberal justices with a blistering pushback. Justice Sotomayor writing, when a president uses his official powers in any way, under the majority's reasoning, he will now be insulated from criminal prosecution. Orders the Navy SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival, immune. Organizes a military coup to hold on to power, immune. Takes a bribe in exchange for a pardon, immune. Even if these nightmare scenarios never play out, the damage has been done. Welcome back. Israel has ordered another evacuation of Khan Yunus in southern Gaza with an attack expected. There is fierce fighting in other parts of Gaza where civilians were ordered to leave. David Garrett reports. Get out for your own good. The message sent from an Israeli army likely planning another attack on Khan Yunus. An evacuation order telling residents, some who only recently returned, to leave Gaza's second largest city. Many are on the move again. Hospital patients are said to be among the throng fleeing. <laughs> this woman is distressed. She asks, where can the children go? <laughs> These evacuees have been told by Israel to head for Mawasi, 10 kilometers west near the coast. It is safe, but overcrowded. <laughs> Another mother says this is the sixth time she has been displaced since war began. Israel insists they are protecting civilians in their hunt for Hamas. This isn't the first time we've seen an evacuation order like this. Israel spent several months inside Khan Yunus battling Hamas before withdrawing earlier this year. The latest order is a sign that Hamas has managed to regroup, and we could soon see Israeli forces moving back into Khan Yunus and a resumption of heavy fighting. Israeli military video of troops in Gaza shows fighting in tight alleyways. It came as the IDF announced more than 670 soldiers have died in Gaza. The precise location of this footage has not been disclosed, but the Israeli forces say they are in the final stages of Rafa operations. Civilians in a neighborhood in Gaza City have been told to leave with intense fighting reported there. Most of these buildings appear deserted. The Biden administration in Washington told Israel to do everything it can to avoid mass casualties. There can be no uh, permanent displacement of, uh, of Gazans. Uh, of course, over the course of this military operation uh, that the IDF is conducting, and I will let them speak to uh, specific logistical parameters, um, as those operations are being conducted, uh, it is, of course, pertinent that uh, civilians and um, uh, non-militants uh, be asked to appropriately uh, evacuate. Back in Khan Yunis, Gazans gather to get water for the evacuation with temperatures over 32 degrees. 
more fighting in the area will hamper these Palestinians' access to fresh, portable drinking water. Israel installed a pipe into the Mawasi evacuation zone following criticism after the army had cut off supplies. The UN warned stockpiles of food still waiting outside Gaza could go to waste because it's not safe to transport it. David Garrett, TVB News. Government bodies, including the Consumer Council, have been under attack from hackers over the past year. Secretary for Innovation, Technology and Industry Sun Dung said, responsibility for the city's cybersecurity and data protection should be shared by all government bureaus. He also said that the establishment of a digital policy office will improve the situation. Sun made the comments in an interview with TVB marking two years of the current administration. Memo Sangai reports. A series of cyber attacks and data breaches hit public and private institutions recently. Some people questioned the government IT system's monitoring work and defense abilities against hacking activities. In an interview with TVB marking the second year of the current administration, Secretary for Innovation, Technology and Industry Sun Dong said all government bodies should share the responsibility of protecting Hong Kong cybersecurity. We need to tell very clearly the responsibility of every bureau or department. We will establish an enhanced mechanism, okay, to make sure that the government IT policy, cybersecurity policy, can be implemented straightly by every people in the government. The government earlier said a digital policy office will be set up this year. The new office will combine the current office of the government chief information officer and efficiency office. One of the focuses of the digital policy officer's work is to enhance cybersecurity protection, including the appointment of a senior government official to supervise the assessment of the government IT system at each bureau. In case that some incident happens, a first leader of the relevant department and bureau will have a very clear role in handling the incidents and proposing the new solutions to prevent from the same incident to happen again. The secretary also expressed his joy over the news of a Hong Kong person being selected as a payload specialist in the National Manned Space Program. I really feel very excited and proud. We are thankful to our country to give Hong Kong a chance that allow our Hong Kong citizens to participate in the very important national aerospace role. Shun said the news of a Hong Kong payload specialist would deliver an important message to local youngsters. They also have a chance to be selected in the future. Mims Nai, TVB News. A 32-year-old woman charged with murdering her husband in Chengkwano appeared in court today. No plea was taken and she remains remanded in custody. The suspect was brought to Kuntao Magistrate's Court today. The woman who claimed to be a housewife was charged with slitting her 30-year-old husband's throat at their Lohas Park apartment last Saturday. The case has been adjourned with the next hearing set to take place on August 29th. The prosecution noted the defendant has suicidal tendencies. The court has permitted correctional services officers to watch over her. There are eight pillar industries in Xinjiang, two of which are textiles and mining. Some Hong Kong companies hope their business in Xinjiang can help them tap the markets in Central Asia and other Belt and Road countries. The output value of Xinjiang's cotton and textile industry tops 200 billion yuan annually. Among the textile manufacturing giants in Xinjiang is Hong Kong-based SK Group, which holds multiple patents in textile technology. They include the waterless dyeing technique, which helps cut carbon emissions in the textile manufacturing process. Its factory runs 24 hours a day thanks to its automated systems. However, since mid-2020, the company has been sanctioned by the U.S. for using Xinjiang cotton. The group later filed a lawsuit against the U.S. government stating there was no forced labor in their production. The general manager of this textile company said they are now actively exploring the market opportunities, not just domestically, but also among Belt and Road countries. Esqua Group has an equal opportunity policy in its recruitment. For now, it has over half of its workers coming from ethnic minority groups. Joseph Chen, chairman of energy company Kaishun, has worked with mining companies in Central Asia for 15 years. His company also cooperated with Xinjiang's Geological Bureau in green mining work. 
Xinjiang Geological Bureau. They provided us with a very uh, thorough planning of how we could do our mining in high altitude countries. They were way ahead of any of the uh, so-called you know, classroom professionals. He said as a result of sanctions from the West, companies with operations in Xinjiang face mounting challenges in efforts to expand their business overseas. I believe, you know, um, Xinjiang, if we could open up you know, further, uh, more Westerners, you know, could set up their operations. In fact, you know, uh, one of the biggest, you know, foreign investors in, uh, in uh, Xinjiang is Volkswagen. They could share with the world, you know, uh, uh, how they could make money out of uh, Xinjiang and uh, how, what Xinjiang is, is like. You know, it's not like what uh, the Western media has been, you know, uh, uh, criticizing. Chen hopes authorities can relax business visa rules to facilitate more international companies, including Hong Kong companies, to set up their business in Xinjiang. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.